This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, well today we're going to be working in Substance Painter and what we're going to do is we're going to go through the entire process of baking maps from high poly meshes to low poly meshes. Okay, so let's uh, check it out. Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. So uh, we're going to start out in Maya. And uh, like I mentioned, we're going to look at the complete uh, bake process from high poly to low poly for a use in, for example, a game engine. OK, so what we're going to do is a, a wall panel um, like in a sci fi corridor or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a simple polygon plane. OK, I'm going to hit control A to open up the attribute editor. I'm going to go in and I'm going to set the subdivision level to one by one. Okay. So this is as low poly as it gets. Okay. And you can see that up here, it says that the face count is one, which makes sense. So our poly count for this object is one, right? Now, if you don't have this information up here, you can go to display heads up display and turn on poly count. Okay. So this is our low poly. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this. So we're going to go to file and actually let's make this a bit bigger first. Hit R. Maybe something like that. Okay. All right. File export selection and we'll call this test plane underscore low poly underscore FBX. All right. And I'll export that to my desktop. All right, so we've got the low poly covered. Now let's look at the high poly. We can use the same one. And before we do that, keep in mind that this guy, as it is the low poly, has to be UV'd. But because this is a basic, straightforward object, it is already UV'd, and I'll show you. All right, there's just a simple square, nothing to it. So keep in mind, absolutely important, you have to UV map your low poly object. Not so for your high poly, but for your low poly. Okay, cool. So we got our low poly exported. We're going to add some detail to this one. What we're going to do is we're going to add some subdivisions. Let's do, I don't know, five and five. And then we're going to jump into our top view. We're going to right click at the edge, double click on that one and shift double click on that one. And I'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it better. I'm going to hit R and I'm going to scale that out to the edges here. And then what we'll do is we'll take these two and push them in. So we get kind of a line in the middle here. And then what we'll do is we'll go into our modeling toolkit. We'll take our uh, multi-cut tool and we'll just make some cuts here. So go from that corner to that corner. You get the idea, right? Just come up with something. So we got that. We're going to do that again. On the other end, we're going to start here. Come on, multi cut here, here, and we're going to hit enter. Okay, let's close this stuff down. There we go. We're going to jump into this view and let's see what kind of pattern we can come up with that works for us. Let's uh, right click at a face, oh, hit Q on a keyboard first. We'll select these. Let's see how that works for us. Yeah, it's fine. And then we'll take these and these. Doesn't really matter, okay? All right, we're gonna hit Control E to extrude. Hold down your control key as you left click and drag on thickness, and then you can pull that up. We're not going to go nuts on that. Keep that nice and low. Let's do 0 0.4 maybe. That's fine. And then we're still going to tweak the offset. So we're going to pull that in and let's see what direction. Uh, 0 0.09 looks okay. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's fine. And you can clearly see that this is no longer a flat surface. And I'll prove it to you when we check this from this view here. And we zoom in and hit four. 
you can see that we definitely have some height going on, okay? And also, if we go to object mode and select it, you can see our face count is 81 instead of one, all right? So now that we have that, we can select that panel and we can go to File, Export Selection, uh, where do you go? Right here. And we're gonna call this Test Plane High Poly, FBX dot FBX, okay? And export that selection. So now that we have our high poly and low poly both exported as an FBX, it's time to jump into Substance Painter. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, we're in the Substance Painter. It's uh, starting up, yeah, here we go. And uh, it's time to uh, start a new project. So we're gonna go to File, we're gonna go to New, and we're gonna leave our template at PBR Metal Rough, and you can choose uh, what type you wanna use. I'm just gonna leave that as is, okay? We're gonna select our low poly mesh here, so we're gonna to go to select and we're gonna use our test plane low poly FBX. Open that up. I'm gonna leave this at uh, direct X. This is an option based on uh, the type of game engine you're using. And that is whether it should be uh, reversed or inverted or not, okay? So check what type is used by your game engine, all right? So I'm gonna set the document resolution to 2K I don't have any maps created just yet, so I don't have any existing normal maps or anything like that, so I'm not gonna add anything. And I'm just gonna hit okay. Now as I do that, uh, my object, my low poly object will be uh, inserted, and here it is. It's that simple one face count, poly count, plane thing that we created, and it brought in one Lambert, okay? So nothing going on special there. All right, so next step is to bake our textures. So we're gonna go to view and reset the user interface first. So we all have the same layout. And then we're gonna go to the bake textures button. Now, as we do that, we've got a couple of options here. Uh, these are our common settings for our bakes. And here we have the maps that we want to have baked, okay? Now, keep in mind that whatever you do later on in Substance Painter, as far as uh, painting and generators and masks and all that cool stuff, all that information is placed into the maps that you bake. So if you don't have the information, um, if you can't put it on a map because you didn't bake it, it won't work. So I'm gonna leave all of these as is, uh, which will give some error messages specifically on this one, but don't worry about it. Uh, because we don't have any vector colors or color mask ID or anything. Uh, so we're just gonna leave all of these alone, right? So the output size, we're gonna do 2K. Um, this is the padding, um, just leave it at one, don't worry about it. And uh, apply the fusion, same deal. Just, uh, you know, that's for another video. It's, you know, no, it's too technical. I'm not gonna do that in this video. Just leave it alone, all right? Okay, so high definition meshes. Here is where we're gonna load our high poly. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna go to our uh, test plane high poly. Here we are. That's our high poly. And now we basically got two ways to do this, okay? We can use a cage and a cage file. So we select use cage and then load up a cage file that we prepared. Or we can use this option here where we have max frontal distance and max rear distance. Now, this needs some explanation. What are we doing here? We got a low poly mesh, which is a flat plane, and we got a high poly mesh with some elevated surfaces, okay? Now we want the information from the high poly to be baked on top of the low poly. So the way that works is basically that the low poly shoots out rays uh, of, you know, beams, rays, whatever you wanna call it, to its surroundings to find if there is detail. Now, I typically like to compare it to a sonar on, let's say, a submarine. It sends out a ping and it hits the surface of the sea bottom and says, okay, that's a distance, so I know that that's where my sea bottom is. Now, basically, this is the same system. The low poly shoots out rays, finds details on the high poly mesh, which are elevated, and says, okay, that's where we are. So that's how that works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this cage stuff alone and I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna leave this value very low, which is pretty much my uh, starting point, my inner um, ray or origin, if you will. And then for the uh, max rear distance, I'm gonna crank that way up to 
maybe 0 0.8 or so, yeah? Now, these check boxes here are related to whether the system should use information based on these two. So relative to the bounding box, should the system average out the normals between this one and the high poly one and so forth. I'm gonna leave all of that alone, right? So we're just gonna hit Bake Lambert. Now, as we do that, you will see that on our low poly mesh, we will suddenly see detail appearing from our high poly mesh. This is not the high poly mesh, it's the low poly mesh receiving information, okay? So let's say hit bake on that, and we'll give that a sec. And there you go, as it's starting to bake, you see that information popping up. This is the error message that I talked about, don't worry about it. And we'll just have that pan out, just give it a sec. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so I'm just gonna pop back to our shelf here, and what we see is that we now have a normal map, a world space normal map, ambient occlusion, we got a curvature map, position map, thickness map, okay? So all of that is created. Oop, get back here, okay? All right, so get rid of that, okay? So uh, yeah, we got all that, and now what we can do is we can texture. So uh, before we do anything else, keep in mind that if we look at this guy, it is completely flat, okay? So this is our low poly with our high poly information. Now let's uh, just quickly put some information on this guy. We'll do a smart material, we'll do a painted steel. And uh, let's see, this is, a little bit too clean maybe let's see what else um, scratched oh rusted steel that's pretty cool we'll do that okay I'll just drag that in I'll wait until that's applied and the reason I'm doing that is that will help me to explain something to you guys okay so <clears throat> excuse me if we go in here you can clearly see these edges right now the reason why these edges are visible is because of the curvature map that has been baked and because of the normal map that has been baked okay now I'm just gonna go with a different material here because I want to show you guys some edge wear so let's see what else we can do we'll take this guy okay and here you can clearly see that the red paint is fainted on the edges here, which is kind of exactly what we want. And based on the fact that it's a smart material, you can go in here and start to change, you know, the level of scratches and so forth, okay? So that's basically all there's to it. If you then want to use your textures that you have created here in your game engine, you would right click, go to, uh, where do you go? Uh, export textures right here and then you can go into configuration and you can choose for example uh, let's say a unity 4 if that's the game engine you're using unity 5 uh, if you want to um, render that out in v-ray depending on what you want you can choose that you can go back to your export here and I did videos on how to do that here is where you can choose that again let's say for example unity 4 and then if you hit export it will export your textures okay and then what you can do is you can go to your game engine load in your low poly mesh and your maps and you're ready to go all right so that's all there's to it uh, hopefully um it was helpful for you guys if you have any questions let me know uh, i'm just gonna make this thing nice and pretty for the thumbnail and then uh, i'll see you guys later okay thanks bye